Ahoy! Today we're making a guide for Danzaburo. Seems like quite a few struggle a little bit with fully making his kit work and we'll get into that. This will have a section for the abilities, combos, leveling order as well as items. Let's get right into it. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the passive. The passive is dubious savings, which means when you farm gold, a portion of that, 10%, go into your pocket, which then accumulates interest and over the course of the game you get a significant amount of extra gold. If you want to see the exact numbers, just look at the abilities screen in game. Every time one of your up to four pouches is filled, you receive a 10 bonus power, so up to 40 bonus power. However, this passive is currently not working as intended and apparently you lose all of this bonus power when you die, so keep that in mind, he's not quite as strong as he could be. The pouches will fill across the course of the game and roughly be full around level 20-ish. The first ability is Fool's Gold. Danzaburo shoots three relatively slow projectiles that will stop upon hitting a guard or bounce off walls. And when they stop, they linger for a second and then detonate and deal an additional amount of damage if the enemy is still in the area. Enemies that get hit also get intoxicated for a short time. And if you get hit by multiple bags, which is possible, then the secondary and third bag will only deal 20% of the damage. Same goes for the secondary and third explosion. The first hit and the first explosion do full damage. While you can use this ability to clear and you can use it to hit enemies while clearing at the same time if you are a little bit lucky with their positioning, you can also use this at very close range for maximum damage and shotgun all three projectiles in the enemy's face. That's going to be important a little bit later. What's worth noting right now is that this is his main clearing and poking tool. His second ability is Alluring Spirit, which allows him to drink from his sake bottle and then throw it forward, dealing damage to enemies in the inner circle of the projectile and taunting enemies that stay in a larger area around the projectile if they stay there for a brief period of time. So there are three very quick ticks that happen first where enemies are slowed by 10% per stack and if they haven't left the circle after the third tick then they get taunted by the flask for one second. The flask itself has a health point system and takes between two to four hits to break depending on the rank. This taunt has no diminishing returns so no matter what other CC enemies were hit with before it'll always be one second unless this bottle is broken. Other than that if an enemy takes more than 30% of their maximum health as damage while taunted the taunt is broken as well. That honestly doesn't matter all too much in my opinion because in one second you're typically gonna land one ability and then one basic and that's gonna happen either way because the taunt turns them around and disrupt will always be there. So if the taunt is shortened down by 0.2 seconds, it's not gonna make a difference. Danza's third ability is Tanuki Trickery which allows him to fight in a field of bamboo that slows enemies down while increasing his own movement speed, giving him haste, so no movement speed penalty and also reduces the incoming attack damage for Danzaburo, so anything, any damage that he takes from basic attacks is reduced by 20%. On top of that, Danzaburo is also slow immune while being in the 24 unit radius of this ability. The field lasts for 5 seconds, but that's not all. If you leave the field, you turn into a leaf. This allows you to have even more increased movement speed, up to 40% for 4 seconds, and you have a bunch of leaf decoys around you which make it very hard for the enemy to tell who the real Danzaburo is unless they see you exactly at the point of leaving. You remain slow immune while in this form, you can pass through enemies and if you take any damage or deal any damage with an ability then this transformation will break. While this part in itself only lasts for seconds, both of these parts actually work together and that's something you definitely should know about at least and try to utilize. Because the cooldown of this ability starts ticking the moment you use the first part. And that means if you start with the first part and fight in the bamboo field for a while, but leave it before the fifth second is over, you can get the leaf form afterwards. So you can get benefits from this for a total of roughly eight to nine seconds, depending on your exact timing, if you know how to use it. So Juke attacks in the bamboo field, use the immunity to your advantage, use the haste effect to your advantage and then when it comes to chasing or getting away you can use the leaf form and step out. You just gotta make sure that you don't step out too late because otherwise you're not gonna get the leaf form anymore. Beyond that you can obviously also use the leaves very tactically by throwing enemies off and making them think that you're another leaf than the one that you actually are. Now the ultimate has two forms. The first one works similar to a Neath ult. You cannot aim as far as the Neath ult, the enemy has to be somewhere in your vision, but you shoot 
a rocket and that will lock onto uh, the closest target and normally the one that you aimed at. You don't necessarily even have to have them in your field of vision, which is interesting. It'll still lock onto them if it locked onto them at all at any point. The lock-on range here is 120 units. This rocket chases enemies across a very long distance and if it hits them, it'll stun them and deal massive damage and 50% AoE damage to enemies around as well. If an enemy gets behind a wall, the rocket will crash into the wall and explode there. It'll still deal AoE damage in that area, but if the enemy is far enough away at that point, they will not take damage and not be stunned. As this ability has a 1.5 second wind up, you want to make sure to know when to use it. You can use it as an engage for your team, you shoot the rocket at the enemy team, so you set the fight off with an initial stun and a big AoE, or you can use it to secure a kill on an enemy that might get away. You just don't really want to use this in tight jungle areas with a lot of walls. By the way, minions will not stop this projector. And then there's the second form where you go into the rocket, and that takes care of the jungle issue. Because in this scenario, the rocket itself keeps the same effect, minus the target lock-on, and instead you are in the rocket and you are steering the rocket, and when you hit a target, the rocket breaks and you pop out of it. This cannot be cancelled and the only way to get out of this and use anything else is to crash the rocket into a wall or wait until it expires and explodes eventually. This has massive combo potential with Dunsabur's other abilities, but we'll get to that. First, let's have a look at the ability order. For that, so you understand why we're leveling this way, a quick explanation of what you get from each ability for leveling it. From the one, you get 55 damage per projectile and another 25 base damage for each explosion. So if you hit one projectile and one explosion, that's 80 damage. If you hit more than that, it's even more. So it could be 240 extra base damage per ability. And you also get an additional 0.2 seconds of intoxicate duration. So this is a no-brainer. So much extra damage in CC that you just have to level it first. And it's your main clear ability. So no discussion there. The second ability gives you 50 extra damage, 20 extra healing per level, and one second cooldown reduction and also 0.5 flask health. So four different effects, which is also very, very strong, uh, that provide this ability with a lot more overall, even giving you some more sustain in lane. The third ability gives you 2.5% extra movement speed in the AoE area and then 5% more in the leaf form. Since the base values here are already high and the main benefit comes from the haste and slow immunity as well as the decoy form, this is not really worth leveling before anything else. The ultimate increases the base damage of the ability by 60 damage, which is not that much considering the long cooldown, and increases the stun by 0.1 second. On the other hand, keep in mind this is in a very big area because of the detonation, but then it's also halved. The resulting leveling order is 1, then usually 2 because that gives you more safety than the 3 in my opinion. Then you can level the 1 again if you're safe enough, and otherwise the 3. Uh, then you definitely want to level the 1. 1 point in the ultimate, max out the 1 as much as you can. And I would recommend leveling the 2 at this point and just sticking to the 1, maxing that out, maxing out the 2 as much as you can here, and then look towards multiple points in the ultimate and then max out Tanuki Trickery unless you can get another point into the ultimate, since I think the extra damage from the rocket is not that much that is really worth it early, and the 1 and 2 are such strong abilities that benefit so much from leveling that you want to prioritize them. So now for the combos. There are a lot of combos you can do with him, but I think there are two that are fundamental to using him. The first one, the most basic one, is the 2-1 combo. If you throw the 2, and then you set up the taunt, you can guarantee at least one projectile of the one, and if you're already close to the enemy, then you can easily guarantee multiple projectiles of the one as well, because the enemy is locked in place. You maybe shoot one basic attack before and then attack cancel into the one. It has a bit of wind up, so you want to be quick once the taunt is landed, but most of the time it makes it much easier to hit, since the travel time of the one is quite slow. This is basically the combo you're going to use every time where you didn't just independently land your one and then follow up with the two. The other combo is a very aggressive one that I think pays off quite well and especially matches Dunzabur's overall playstyle. I think a lot of players at the moment are very careful when it comes to Dunzabur and play him like a very passive ADC when really you want to think more along the lines of what happened to Jing Wei, where initially everyone was playing very passive and people thought she was that, yeah, not really doing that much. And then people figured out, especially after Ataraxia, I think they did in the SPL, that you can just go in very aggressively with your one into your dash and get all these benefits and then really 
work on the enemy before they can even react. And that is what you can do with Danzaburo by using the ultimate to engage. So you use the ultimate, you ride the rocket, you stun an enemy, you land one basic attack after and you use your one and you guarantee all three shots of the one because the enemy is still stunned unless they have used beats. And if they've used beats, then you can just use your two afterwards and drag them right back in. But in that case, you're at least not going to land all three shots of the one. But this is very quick, very high damage. Two basic attacks plus the ultimate, uh, plus your first ability with multiple shots. That usually most enemies will back off at that point. And unless you're hitting for the middle of a team fight, uh, you may actually get away with this. And then if the enemy wants to keep fighting, you also have your three that you can drop on them. So they are slowed, you are sped up and have your haste effect and everything else, giving you a massive advantage while boxing. I found that especially since a lot of his abilities have some AoE factor, this often allows you to even fight into multiple enemies because you have so much self peel and so much damage to scare enemies off very very quickly. Now let's talk about builds. When it comes to builds for Danzaburo there is so much you can do, it's insane because he can basically utilize almost every type of playstyle. He works very well with ability based builds obviously because he's an ability based hunter, he also works pretty well with attack speed builds because he has so much CC that allows him to box very well, trade very well and he also works pretty well with crit builds and that is especially because of fail not. So I think that fail not is probably the best item for Danzaburo overall. It is something that kind of works into every build that you use. Even if you use an ability based build, yes it has crit but it still comes with a lot of pen and a lot of CDR and a lot of power. Even the passive works perfectly for his ultimate, especially if you use it aggressively, as I just described. So I don't see any reason not to build this Jolton's on steroid on him, because it is really a bit of everything, except attack speed maybe. But even in an attack speed build, I would recommend including fail not as a percentage pen item, as a early CDR option, which you don't get that much of in that build otherwise, and he benefits a lot from CDR. Think some of the Cupid builds that are ran at the moment, which also are mostly focused on attack speed, but still include fail not because it's such an effective item. Now, as the stacking item on him, I would generally recommend Transcendence because he is very mana hungry. Of course, you can go for the attack speed Devil's route if you want to, if you really want the lifesteal, but I feel like it's not that necessary for him since he has a self heal and he just needs the mana way more to poke enemies out of lane. He's such a strong bully that even lifesteal will not hold up against him very well. When it comes to boots, as always, for ability-based hunters, it's your choice between Warrior Tabe and Ninja Tabe. Both work effectively. I prefer Ninja Tabe to get some easy attack speed, because that allows me to go into Fail Not next, and then just deal massive amounts of damage on very low cooldown, especially if you have Transcendence. After that, everything is flexible once again. You can go into Atalanta's and have more of a usual ADC route, maybe go into Kin Size later. You can go into Asai if you want some more sustain. You can go into Odysseus Bow if you want to have that extra clearing, but again, everything is kind of possible here. It's extremely hard to build Danzaburo wrong when even more outlier items like Berserker's Shield or Brawler's Beatstick or whatever you want work very well on him. The only item that I wouldn't build unless you're playing him in jungle is Jones Wrath because you already have enough CDR from the other items, but outside of that there's a massive room for you to do things with. If you go down an ability based path you might want to throw in a crusher and then maybe a heart seeker so you get those additional effects as well but again almost anything works this is just an example build to give you an idea of what you can do it's by far not the only thing that you can do on him i also think because of his very aggressive playstyle, some defensive or bruiser items can work very well you can again use berserker shield you can use shifter shield you can use the sledge you can even use frostbound hammer if you want to be really scummy it all fits kind of in there you could make an argument against Atalanta's bow because he has haste in his 3, but then again you could also chase down a second target with the haste you get from Atalanta, so I don't really see it being a downside either. And the only thing that you want to pay attention to in that regard is if you want to build tights. Bane, then you don't want to have Fail Not and Atalanta's unless you don't care about overcapping a little bit. I think Titan's Bane is great since you can have very heavy engages with the ultimate and the effect will benefit you there. It's just that you might be wasting some stats if you're just focusing on that all at once. Since you can use a lot of abilities very quickly and very early in a fight and the cooldown of the three starts when you drop it, you can also do a combination of fail not and malice and then just dump your abilities on the enemy very very quickly. Maybe don't even attack cancel so you can get the reset after you use the abilities uh, and then effectively get more damage at the end of the day. 
Definitely a bit more of an advanced playstyle, but there are a lot of possibilities in what can be done with him, partially because he's just generally very strong at the moment. But again, you can also go with a super standard attack speed build, Devil's Ninja, Fail Not, Atalanta's, Kinsai's, Odysseus Bow, if that's what you really want. I just think there's more interesting item interaction possibilities there that you can utilize. That's it for the Danzaburo guide. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to sub button and maybe the bell so you get notified of other upcoming videos. One of those will be a Danzaburu bounce guide for the Conquest map in the very near future. And other than that, I hope to see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.